Algebra 2, this is Chapter 7, Section 5. Let's see, there is going to be four different videos for this section. This is the first video, and we're just going to have a brief discussion and then look at number and types of roots. Um, so zeros for a function. So let's assume that this strange looking thing here is our function where we've got some number times x to some exponent. The exponent is going to keep counting down until we have a term with no exponent on it. Just a normal polynomial here. And in this case, if we had a root and we said that um, c was a zero here, that means that c is a solution to that. Then our factor um, for this case uh, would have to be x minus c. Our root we would also say is c. So our zero would be c. Our factor would be x minus c. Our root would be c and we would have an intercept at C0. And hopefully now after we've been doing this for a little while, you understand that. Um, just kind of a common concept we need to have to move forward. Know that every polynomial equation with a degree greater than 0 has at least one root in a set of complex numbers. And so with that in mind, let's look at some of these equations. So this has the exponent. It's a degree greater than 0, so we should have a solution. And so if we just added 10 to the other side, we get that a is equal to 10. And you have one solution, and it is a real solution. So one, and it's real. OK, if we look at this next one, I can factor this one. I want factors of 48 that subtract to give you 2. And 6 times 8 would be um, a good set of factors here. So we're going to have x, and we want minus 6 and plus 8 in order to get that positive 2 in the middle. And so let's set that equal to 0. We know that x would be equal to 6, and x would be equal to negative 8 here. And with that in mind, we have 2, and they would both be real solutions here. So one real, so one x to a to the first, one real, x to the second, we've got two real. OK, here's one to the third. On this one, I'm going to fat, take out a common factor. So we've got 3a coming out. That leaves a squared plus 6 on the inside. And so then we can set that uh, two things multiplied together. Um, this is a zero property, equals zero. Each one could be zero. So uh, the 3a could be equal to zero. Or this a squared plus 6 could be equal to zero. In this case, we're done over here. We move the 6 to the other side. And so a squared would be equal to negative 6. And then you need to square root both sides. And when you square root both sides, this becomes a positive and a negative here. And so you end up with a being equal to a positive or negative i square root of 6. And the negative Here we have one real. And we have two imaginary. So one real, two imaginary. Now let's look at one more example down here. So x to the fourth minus 16. This is perfect square. This is going to be y squared minus 4 times y squared plus 4 equal to 0. And this is a difference of two squared, so this becomes y minus 2, y plus 2. And this one stays y squared plus 4. So it's factored. And then I need to set the equal to 0, so this becomes y is equal to plus 2 a negative 2. And then on this side, I need to go the y squared 4 equals 0. 
zero. So y squared equals negative four. When we subtract four from both sides, and then you want to square root both sides, and that makes this plus or minus. So y is equal to a positive or negative um, square root of four is two. Square root of negative is positive or negative y. So this has two reals, two reals, and it has two imaginaries. Okay, so to the first degree, one root, to the second degree, two roots, to the third degree, one real, two imaginary, that's a total of three. To the fourth degree, and we end up with two real, two imaginary, that's four different solutions here, four different 